Okay, YouTube, we're here with the DH, the De Havilon 100 Vampire MK6 from Hobby King on special for 100 bucks, basically, plus or minus a couple of bucks for shipping and uh, whatever you got into your radio system. Just wanted to show you some of the mods I did to really kind of dress this thing up without spending a lot of money on it. Um, first things first, people were concerned about these tail booms being too weak. Um, that's probably a valid concern. I put bamboo skewers through it because I'm a cheapskate and I don't want to spend 30 bucks on carbon fiber because by the time you buy a couple of carbon fiber rods for each of these, you're going to be into it for a third of the price of the plane. I just can't fathom that right now. Maybe if this turns into a really good plane. Um, so I'm just going to run down the quick mods I did. Um, first of all, mod number one, tape. So that you can peel off this canopy. Second mod, four extra magnets. One, two, three, four. And I modified the nose part that catches. Get a shot inside here. I took Q-tip, or not Q-tips, what are these? Toothpicks. <laughs> and skewered them in at an angle to protect this tab. And then I wrapped it with a paper towel, coated it with CA, and made for a tighter fit in the nose. It also helps with placement so that when you go to place it, it always goes to the same spot. Because there's nothing worse than losing a canopy, especially on a fast jet. Um, and they're never the same after they've been broken. So I was like, I'll just go ahead and be proactive on that. And the tape, you'll notice the tape sits flat, so it's not really showing up. You're not going to know it's there. Let's see it. And Here. if you grab this now, you can hardly get it off because of those extra magnets. So those extra magnets really hold tight. You can hear that positive seat. You didn't hear that before. <laughs> Trust me, it barely would stay on. I couldn't believe how crappy this one single magnet worked. So anyway, that's, um, that's the first part. So in terms of, and it's really easy to get on and off. Okay, so second thing I did was, um, obviously I, I touched up silver here, which is the same silver that I used in the video um, to paint on the build videos, to paint the bottom side of the servos, servo one, servo two, servo three, and then I painted over this, and I just chased along this one. That was the only one I did in terms of painting because it was the only one that was obnoxious to me. These ones are, are less obnoxious to me. And it's harder to get down in there and color that. Also, I had this, this decal material break here. So I, I put that yellow um, tape on it. This is where I protruded through with my bamboo skewer. And I was able to, to paint it with the yellow. And it's, I mean, it's not a perfect match, but it's pretty close. Um, also, I touched up silver on the screws so that they match better with the body color. And I painted in the numbers so you can see the HX2-92. And you can see I carry my black down the sides. Um, it's, it's not a perfect, it's not meant to be perfect. It's just meant to be, give you the illusion, okay? So it's just like what I did on my Airbus on the tail boom. Um, same thing here. And I'm going to open the gear for you and I'll show you how that looks too here in a minute. Um, I also painted this all silver. And I painted the servo silver. And I actually took those wires for the steerable nose gear and the actual retract and ran it through and made a new hole up here, which made for a lot easier reach to my electronics. And I'll show you how I did that too in a minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fire this up. I'll show you how I did the battery real quick here. If you wanna come over and get a shot of this. So obviously the hatch comes off, so we'll just put that aside for now. I've got the DX18 on. I'll show you guys all the uh, electronic radio setup. Take a shot of this. Um, this is basically a piece of foam and what's going on here is, hold on, let's try to adjust the light, there we go. Um, this foam receives part of the battery. Now you're probably thinking, you went through all the trouble building that? No, I already had it sitting around, but I trimmed it down a little bit. And the, the problem is, there's a fan back there, guys. So we have to be careful not to, um, not to have any of this crap get sucked in. I also glued along the edges of this, I put thick packing tape along this area because as you're manipulating this, it's going to have a tendency like you'll catch fingernails and things like that on it. I also taped over the top of each of these magnet points. Um, so when you undo that and you're doing it, you won't touch that part of the foam. So real quick, we'll go ahead and fire this up and then I'm going to show you my electronics 
operational and then I'll show you what it looks like um, from the outside operation. Okay, first things first, that's gonna initiate. I have stabilization. Okay, 12.25 inches essentially, which is 311 millimeters. It's right on the CG, okay? So the CG is just in front of this boom, okay? Not in where the gear is, but just in front of the, the tail boom. I measured it like three times because I was like, this can't be right, but it totally is. Um, 311 plus or minus two millimeters is what they say. So basically, if you take the pad of your finger and you lift it up, I'm just a little bit nose heavy right now. Um, the thing that's cool about the way I've got this designed is that I can take and shift this battery back just a hair without any trouble. And all I got to do is just renegotiate the, the strap um, to actually get this thing to be tail heavy. The other thing you got to keep in mind is that you want to try to adjust the CG with your gear up because you're going to be taking off and then the gear will go back. So if you want to make it a little bit tail heavy, um, you know, just be careful because your gear will make a difference because the nose gear is going to collapse back. So before we show you all the electronics inside, let's show you how it looks on the outside. Nice positive seat when we do that. Um, I'm going to come to the other side here in a second. Okay. Okay, so real quick, first things first, gear, okay? Gear operation, very smooth, very impressed with the landing gear. Just looking at some images online, the landing gear are mounted backward. These gears should be coming in, not out. So I was disappointed by that. However, the nose gear is in the approximately correct position, and I don't, this is the smaller to have on. The, the nose gear should actually be even further forward and raked forward, and these should be raked forward. And you'll notice they're also raked out because they're flat with the bottom of the um, the wing. So I don't know, if depending on how this wing turns out, if it's strong, if the landing gear work well, I may end up just pointing them down and slightly forward just to mimic the real one. Um, the other thing too is there's no gear door on this, and to mimic gear door on this will be fine, but you'll also notice that I painted those numbers so that when the gear door open, I just put a piece of electrical tape, this yellow color, and then I just carried the 92 through so that no matter which position the gear are in, um, okay, and then there's my steerable nose gear. I had to do a pretty significant trim, a sub trim of like 70 to get that there. I hope that doesn't compromise my stabilization. Um, there is a way to relearn the home position on stabilization. Um, refer to the manual. I don't know exactly how to do it, but I think when you power it up, it should be fine. Um, so there's still a little bit of trim. The other thing is I got the trim so that they're mechanically even on the elevator and on both elevators, or excuse me, both ailerons. So now I'm going to show you how the, uh, just do it like this. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Now obviously, and I've got a little bit of elevator correction for landing, take off, and then neutral. Okay, I didn't set up differential yet on this. I might go ahead and do differential because they're set up as flapperons. Differential is pretty easy, so I could actually show you how to do that if you decide to do it. Why don't we take a shot of this real quick? Then. Be careful when you lay this thing on your table because the wheels are so far apart. The other thing I, I noticed this wheel is kind of raked in a little bit. It's pointed at a wrong angle, so they're. It's, it's not great for that. I'm afraid it's gonna wear and tear them really bad, so I'm probably gonna to have to give them some attention. But let's come over here and look at this for a second here. So if you wanna do differential, you're already set up as flap runs, so it's really easy. You just turn it on. And I just want it on. Okay, so my differential needs to be negative on this plane because the way that I have my ailerons picked. Okay, so now I'll just show you what 100% differential looks like so you can see. Get a shot of both at the same time. So I'm going to roll the plane. You see what's happening? The differential is working. So basically, I'd be rolling the plane. Hold on a second. 
What you want to do with differential is you want the aileron that's going up to go up more than the aileron that's going down will go down. And what that does is the high pressure system that's being produced, there's more airflow on the top because it's a longer distance than the underside of the wing. So there's a less efficiency when you drop down the aileron compared to when you raise the aileron. So if I want to make a roll, I want to roll it like this. And I want to roll it like this. I don't care about the down as much. The good thing about the down is it's redundant. So if you have a servo fail or if you have an aileron fail or something gets stuck, you'll still have some control. So you don't want to go too aggressive with a differential, but this is what I have at 75. That's full deflection. You can see that this goes almost all the way up and that one barely drops. Same thing when I go the other way. That, that has the same impact with flapperons, which is kind of nice because then when your flapperons are deployed, you have less contrary impact. Because you remember, they both go down so you take off flaps and landing flaps, if you're using flap runs. I'm probably gonna put real flaps in this if this thing flies with a crap. But anyway, when they go down, your differential is gonna help to make them not dip even more and cause all sorts of weird adverse yaw effect. So differential is handy. It's something that it's very uh, subjective in my opinion. I'm probably gonna run my differential at like 50, negative 50 in my case. So you can see that there's just a little bit more impact on the, on the high side. In fact, I'm, I'll run it at 75. We'll just run it at 75, we'll see how it does. The other thing is, um, I also set up um, some dual rates and expo. And do you wanna just take a shot of the actual controller sure. for this? So I'm gonna scroll into my uh, dual rates and expo. And I'll just show you, I always tie them to this switch it there's nothing magical about that i tie all three to the same switch because i'm not going to sit there and think about three axis of flight control while i'm flying i want it to be full on a little bit less control and then like things are crazy i need to calm it down right now before i crash okay same thing with my stabilization on and off i always assign them to the same switches same thing with my flaps i always assign them to the same switch same thing with my gear. I always assign them to the same position, okay? So, which incidentally, that reminds me, my gear is actually backward right now, so I need to flip that because my safe position is always the home position, and right now the gear are down. I need to flip that. But anyway, if you look at my um, dual rates and expo, they're all set to switch F. So for aileron, I have 100% and then uh, no expo. When I go to my neutral, the middle setting, uh, switch setting one this is the one I run it on all the time because I want to be able to go higher rates or lower rates especially for a maiden so I'm going to do 15% expo 100% dual rates and then if I flip it to the high mode I only drop off 10% of my aileron roll uh, uh, impact and then 30% expo okay so I actually set up the exact same thing for elevator and then on rudder I did uh, 15 neutrally all the time and then 30 and 45 with dropping the X, uh, the dual rate down to 90. So basically I'll be flying it in this configuration when I first take off. And really my experience has been that, that um, dual rates and expo make a humongous difference when you have a, a plane that's squirrely. Some might argue that with stabilization you don't need dual rates um, or expo and, and that's just because people don't always want to take advantage of stuff. So no, you don't need it, but you don't need to fly radar controlled airplanes either. <laughs> so I'm going to go into um, sub trim and I'll just show you how small of a sub trim I have for my uh, right aileron and my left aileron. I'm within a few clicks here. And then on my rudder, I'm at 77. <laughs> the problem is when you have these mechanical ties like this, which I'm going to have to have this up anyway to switch my, uh, my gear channel, it's extremely difficult to adjust the length of these because they've got them crimped. So making a mechanical adjustment is near impossible um, unless you get lucky enough to make a whole step. I tried making the whole step and it was worse on the other step. So to, to right the wheel, the easiest way was to sub trim. So real quick, I'm gonna switch my gear channel. Um, so I'm just going into reverse and I'm scrolling over to gear and I'm flipping it. Now when I put the switch,
it, it, it didn't switch. So I'm not really sure what to think on that. So I switched it, and I think what's going to happen is when I um, when I reset the power, then the stabilizer receiver or whatever will put it back to the correct setting. So this is probably a good time to show you the inside so you can see how I set up the stabilizer. And uh, real quick, I'll, I'll turn that. That's all the way up. That's all the way down. That's off. That's on. And I figured out why that gear thing didn't work. Because my gear is actually controlled on a different... Um, it's controlled on a different channel. So gear is correct because gear is actually the stabilizer on and off. And then auxiliary... Uh, auxiliary 2 is the one I needed to switch. So now my safe my safe setting, gear up, gear down. Okay, sorry about the confusion there guys. It gets a little confusing sometimes. All right, so the other thing too is when I first made my planes with stabilization, I run about 30% on the switch, but that's with 150 down and 150 up. Um, so that means I actually have quite a bit of additional play on that. So if you want to come over here and try to get a shot of this, we'll show you what it looks like behind the battery. Now I gotta of course plug this, unplug this. Uh, this is a Turnigy, or in my case it's a Zippy Compact. One thing I like about planes when they have enough room is that you can take and loosen that strap a little bit and then you can take this whole battery out without having to screw with everything, okay? So the other thing is you'll notice that it tips it's not uncommon with jets. 3300 milliamp, 4S, 60C, should be ample power. If I wanted this thing to CG out with a 4000 milliamp, which should fit, um, provided we put it flat, then I think I could get it to CG out. So we'll see how this does with a 3300. I also have 2200s that I'll have with me. So you'll notice, first thing you'll notice is this big ugly piece of squishy foam. Well that big ugly piece of squishy foam just comes right out, okay? The second thing you're going to notice is, ooh, it's so pretty in there. Um, that was a lot of work, by the way. Hey, I'm going to put this pillow underneath the tail booms so I don't drop this off. The tail booms on this plane are strong enough to hold up itself. But, um, okay, so getting back in there for that shot, I want to show you what I did with my, my stabilizer, which it's under here. And I used a Lemon RX 7 channel with stabilization, dual diversity antenna on a DSM-X system. And it's tricky to get it out. But once it's out, you can work with it. It just slips out. So it's a pressure fit, actually. And that's what I did in my Airbus as well. And you can see the whole thing comes out so it's accessible. This is depth gel bottle that I cut out. I glued this down and I used tape instead of hot glue to hold down these antennas in a diversity configuration, meaning they're at 90 degrees from one another. You're probably thinking to yourself, holy crap, you buried that in the middle of your plane with your antennas on it? Yes, I did. And if I have any issues with range, then I'll just have to put a satellite on there. You can hook up a satellite on here and I actually do have a satellite that I could add. Um, it's possible I might need it. This would be the first time I've ever needed a satellite antenna. But you can see how I did that with the curve. Underneath here, the UBC is right there. I just tied the wires carefully. It was ridiculous. There was such a rat nest in there. And all I got to do is just get that down low enough to tuck it under and then hold up the Velcro and it slides right into position. And so keeping in mind, guys, yeah, you don't want your stabilizer to move. Well, you want it to move with the plane, but it's never going to be that secure. You're going to either use a, a, a foam double-sided tape, or you're going to mount it like I did in there. This way, I can get in there, I can change settings, I can add my flap wiring without having to kill myself later, you know, just because it's so much work. Um, so, really happy with that. Now, when I put in the battery, I don't have to fight things. But guys, just look how ridiculous this is. Without anything to support the battery back there, 
It's just, I don't know how you would do it. You would have to add tail weight. I am not going to add weight to planes, guys. Um, I refuse to do it. The only weight I'm adding to planes is equipment, um, flaps, heavy tires, you know, something that's going to add value to the flight characteristics of the plane. And see, all I've got here, the only problem is this. I shoot down this thing. Oh, yeah. Where's my airflow, right? Well, there's still a lot of airflow in this airplane. There's airflow around the nose. There's airflow up and over the battery and then through. There's also airflow from the bottom, guys. I mean, there's airflow in all directions. The problem is, because there's airflow in all directions, if you have a battery that has to hang over, you got to put it somewhere. So my expectation is that we're going to be okay with this. If it's not okay, I'm going to have to get more creative. I'll probably hollow out on these areas here. And then basically the airflow will still be allowed to go in and around the sides of the battery. Um, but I'm really excited to try this plane out um, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, not the least of which is the fact that it's just such a weird configuration for the battery. Um, and just real quick, if you try to close your canopy, it will close like this too. Just to show you, I can demonstrate that. But only if you get the wire going the other way. And ironically enough, I don't think it'll CG out. Yeah, see, it's, it's a little on the nose heavy side. It's probably about where I was before. But this thickens up here, so that's why I was doing it flat. The other thing is I get a better hold on my battery with this foam in the back if I do it this way. And see, it's really not too hard to get that battery in there. I mean, if you've seen how much work it is to put the battery in my A10 tank killer, um, this, is, this is a daydream compared to that. So we're going to have to see how that works. And we're going to have to see if it flies worth a crap. <laughs> but I just wanted to thank you guys for watching. I know my build videos are super tediously long. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Thanks for watching. It's kind of nice. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.